of the letter. I associate myself with everything that the other signatories have talked about in terms of wanting to restore the Senate's tradition of extended debate on issues of grave importance to the American people. But let me be clear about the reason that I now support an adjustment to the long-standing rules of the Senate. And it is because I never imagined when I signed that letter that not a single member of the Republican Party would stand up for our democracy since January 6, when we saw an acceleration of state laws that would allow partisans to overturn the impartial count of an election. We need to address the issues that so many of us have talked about here. The people of New Hampshire, the people all across the country, they need us to address pressing issues like lowering the cost of prescription drugs or making it easy for families to afford childcare. But if we do not have a functioning democracy where people know that when they vote, that vote will be impartially counted and upheld, and the people who are defeated will accept defeat so that they can have an accountable elected representation in Washington, then there is no democracy. And when I signed that letter, I never imagined that today's Republican Party would fail to stand up for democracy. I was raised by a veteran of the Battle of the Bulge. He would talk to us at the breakfast table, and the question was, what are you going to do for freedom today? Big question to ask elementary school kids, to be sure. But he had a right to ask it, as does every veteran who has fought for this country, including my colleague, Senator Cotton. But the Republican Party and the Democratic Party must unite to stand for freedom and to stand for an accountable democracy. Because without that, the rules of this body do not matter. I yield the floor.